Okay, so I got a 7.3. That'd be this one right here, I believe, isn't it? Yep. Yep. Okay, so we'll just capture that. I'm giving up all my secrets here. I do like my snag it. So let's just do this problem. What the heck? We got time, don't we? We've only been talking for 17 minutes. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, first we're going to look at that and we're going to, I personally would do this. I would go in there and I'd say I want to, well, first I'd have to break it up into the different shapes, right? So let's see. I'm going to break it up probably like this. And I would, I would show that, okay? So, and you can number these however you want, but I'm going to call this one one. I'm going to call this one two. And I'll call this one three. But I'm not done here. This one's four. This rectangle here that have to account for that too. I believe they account for that. Do they break it up? How do they break it up? They only break it up into three. Interesting. I guess with the Y bar you wouldn't have a problem, but the X bar you sure might. Hmm. Let's see what happens. I'm going to break that up. I'm going to leave that in there. I think we still need it. But wouldn't you have to make one the whole shape then? Hmm? Like would it one have to be the whole rectangle including four? If you minus, you know, if you leave four as the part, your number one. Actually, that might make it easier. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, no, you can't do that because this is a void. Yeah, but I'm saying you wouldn't break three up then if you did it your way. Like if you made this the whole piece like that, you wouldn't need this here. Well, you what, you, like, what you would have to do if you made, I guess if you made one the whole piece and then made this yeah, a cutaway, cut away. yeah, you need three yeah that, that might make it easier. Let's try that. That's why it's important too, so I'm going to do it different than the way the book's doing it. We'll see what happens. That's why it's important too that you show me what, how you broke it up because you can break it up different ways. Okay, so we'll call the whole thing one, and we'll call this two. Then we'll call this three. Right? That's what you're talking about, Jeff. Yeah. Let's see what happens. So the area of one, and I make up a, a basically a chart, is the base times the height, and that's going to be, what, six times uh, six. So that's 36 square inches, right? Area of two. Somebody's going to have to get your calculator out because I don't, I didn't bring mine. Uh, it's two inch diameter. So for a circle, the area is what? Pi d squared or something? Pi r squared. Pi d squared divided by four or, pi, what was it? Pi r squared? Somebody punch that in real quick. How much? Three point? 2.5 square inches. Somebody else punch that in so we know for sure. Now, and also what I'm going to do. Okay, it has to be three times uh, 3.14 squared, right? So it's six something. But watch, I'm going to put that right in front of it. The negative sign. It's a negative area, isn't it? What was it? Ended up six what? Uh, oh, I guess I should, to be consistent, I should do this too. The area of a circle is just pi times the diameter, right? It's according to, to this, the area is pi times the diameter squared divided by four. 
Which cancels it, so now. Negative, how much? Square inches. The area of three is what? Uh, four by two. Eight. So four times two. Negative eight square inches. Okay, so then we'll do y1. Hey, yeah. Why is it negative eight inches? Because I'm taking oh, that back oh, out. Okay. So you okay. Negative in front of the 3.142. So anything you're right. Not. If I'm if I'm cutting it out of this section, out of this piece, I have to subtract it. I thought that was. I didn't see the number in the piece. It's all right. So y1 is the distance from the x-axis up to the center of this block, which is half of six, right? So it's six divided by two. Three inches. Then y2 is going to be what? Uh, actually, that's on circles, it's pretty handy because typically, if you dimension to the center point, it's this from six inches, right? So it's six inches minus two, and that ends up being four inches. And a lot of times, the dimension will come off of the bottom to go to the top. Typically, that's what happens, isn't it? When you dimension a circular feature, you come from the bottom, typical. You just use that number. All the calculations done because you're going right to the center of the circle. So that's, don't overcomplicate that one. I know you, you like to do that, but don't do it. If the number's already given, pff, use it. How's it for? It's the total height of six, right? And they said come off of the top two. So it's six inches minus two gives you the distance from here to here, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's you, you have to go to the center of the circle. That's where your, your centroid, your center of gravity for that circle would be. Okay? Just like in this case, if you were looking for the X bar, the three and a half inches would already be given. Because remember, you're only dealing with that particular shape. Okay, then on Y3, whoa, didn't need to do that. So Y3 is going to be what? Bless you. 2 divided by uh, 2, right? One inch. Now, the last time I checked, that's all we needed were those six numbers. So then we're going to go in there and we're going to say, well, okay, y bar, which is the distance from the x axis up to the center of gravity for this whole piece here, is going to be the area of one times the y of one. Uh, just about screwed up, didn't I? And I like to write this out just to get used to it. Minus the area of 2 times the y of 2. Minus the area of 3 times the y of 3. Divided by area of 1 minus area of 2 minus area of 3. And I sure hope this all works out. It should. It shouldn't be a problem. So y bar equals 36 square inches times 3 inches minus, uh, let's see what we got there, 3.14. Square inches times four inches minus eight square inches times one inch. All that divided by, uh, let's see, 36 
square inches minus 3.14 square inches minus uh, 8 square inches. And then, so what do we end up with? All the square inches cancel out, don't they? And we're left with something in inches. That's what that all comes out to? Somebody verify it. I like verification. Oh, that's why I like verification. Does it? I know I did this one. <laughs> but I still like verification. And, and the best part about this verification is it signals to him he might have done something wrong. Three point what now? Close enough. 3.52, so that means if we measure off of this axis right here, up 3.52 inches, we would find the, the Y portion of the center of gravity. So it does work doing it their way or the book way or the way we just did it. And that's what I said, that's exactly why you have to show me how you broke this thing up. And then show me this stuff right here. I don't care if you like to do it or not. Show me your work. So ultimately with the shape, we have free reign to break it up. Pretty much. Yeah. And that's why I can't stress it enough. You have to show me how you broke it up. Or I can't follow it. And if I can't follow it, guess what that means? I'm not going to grade it. It's pretty simple. Okay. For the off of the x axis. That's just part of it. You're only halfway there. Yeah. I follow the math. I just want to know what that actually is. That's what I put over there on the left side, that 3.52. That's the, di that's the distance. If I can find my cursor again now. That's the distance. There's a point somewhere in here. Let's see it'll be. Well, it probably is some. And it might actually be inside that hole. But there's a point right there that, and it's probably not going to be right inside that hole because that's centered and this thing isn't going to be centered with that piece over on the left, is it? And we're going to find that out here in just a second. But that, that 3.52 is how far you would measure up off of that x-axis to get that, that height. So we're going to do x now? You betcha. So now we're going to do x. Now on, on a quiz, we may not do x. We may just do y. But X is going to be exactly the same. So then what I would do is find my mouse. So I'm going to give, now I already have the areas, so I don't need to worry about that. In fact, if you looked at my homework back in the day, probably where you see the uh, Y bar, where, the, where you see those Y calculations, you probably would have seen an X instead of the Y. And then right beside it, you would have seen the Y. But I would do X1, X2, X3. Okay, so let's see if we can get we can get the whole picture in here. Well we can we can't, can we? Nope, can't do it that way. Okay, so uh, maybe one more click. Yep. Okay, so to get the X, so now we're measuring on each one of these different blocks, if you will, how far from this axis over here, the left side, do we need to go to get to the center of each one of those? Well, the first one was the big block, right? So it's 6 divided by 2, so it's 3 inches, right? The second one, yep. Oh, three and a half, I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's not three and a half, it's, it's, no, it's three for that particular block. It's, what you're looking for, Brian, is the midpoint of this whole big square. Yep, so you get six inches of height. Yep, and six inches of width. 
So it's the base for the X bar. Why isn't it's it four? Why aren't we just taking two inches? If we're measuring up the left hand side, we have six inches in the center of the No, we're talking about one, the big block. We're looking at the big block here, right? This whole big block is number one. So if you look at the calculations here on the second sheet, for a rect for a rectangle or a square, it says X bar, which is what we're doing now, for that particular square is the base divided by two. Y bar is the height divided by two. So unlike the example on the instruction sheet, we don't have we're not taking that as like one the little left hand side as being block number no. one. Okay. No. Okay. We did it different than what they did it in this example in the book. Okay. We broke it out. See, we have three different three different things here. Let's redraw these. We've got this is block number one. Let's see if I can find it. Block number one is this big deal here. Block number two is this. And block number three is this one, which is actually right there. And we subtract this one. And we subtract this one from that big block. Okay? Does that help? Not really. I was going to say, I'd go on. So then what we're doing is we're finding the, the center of gravity for this block. We're finding the center of gravity for this block, which, by the way, is given. And we find the center of gravity for that block. That's what those Y numbers are. So Y1 was this distance right here. Y2 was this distance plus all the way to the bottom. Y3 was this distance right here because it was at the bottom. X, same thing. We're coming off of the left side. So X1 is going to be this one right here. X2 will be this distance but relative to the left side. So you have to, we'll get that number directly. Both of those numbers come directly, basically. Then this one, that Y bar would be this distance from here all the way over to the, to the left edge. Okay? I said Y, that's actually an X, isn't it? So that's how we split it out, and that's how we get those numbers. Come on. So... Again, this was six inches wide. We divide it by two. That tells us that that center of gravity for that big block is three inches over from the left side. So we're using the left side as the base in this instance, not the bottom. Right. The okay. well, the here's your y-axis, and here's your x-axis. Because on the example sheet, we're measuring from the bottom, so that would be. It seems like your first, the y one, should be. Two inches, so it's half a four in height. Well, no, it's but it's bottom. but it's not. Well, I know it's what? not. Obviously, I'm wrong, but I'm not seeing why I'm wrong. I mean, <laughs> you know, if you, if you look at the y axis, it's going to be about three inches. Well, but the, the the reason that happens like that is this, Brian, because your block that you're talking about isn't this block right here. Your block that you're talking about is like this with the y-axis being right here. That's why yours is different than mine. See, mine was, was a whole different chunk. So yeah, yours would have been up here for that particular piece, but then I would have had to have had this piece down here as a totally separate entity. That's why that's happening like that. Okay, you bet. All you have to do is keep being persistent with the questions, you know. Does everybody understand that? So his was a little. So it it does matter how you break it up, which is you know we've been we've been talking about that, and that just illustrates it matters how you break it up, and it matters that you show me how you broke it up because your Y one would have been totally different than my Y one, but then you would have had to have had another Y one somewhere involved in that in that equation. 
So, yeah, I think that's yeah, – the questions really help. They really do. It, it opens up more discussion. Well, Chris? Is, can we break it up into that section that you just did to show you the sections instead of just numbering them all in there? You could, you could yeah, draw the pictures like that. Yeah. Yeah, like, you could that do that. Be more than actually, like, all in there. Mm -hmm. And if that's what it takes, I, I don't have any problem with that by any means. I tend to not do that, but if that helps you, absolutely do that. No doubt. And it would actually help me if you did that, but I don't require it. But yeah, that would make it a lot easier on me because then I don't have to guess at all. I don't like to guess on your work. So then the second block, again, we're taking that number right off of the, right off of the uh, drawing here. That X bar is just three and a half inches. Okay. No problem. The third one then is this chunk right here, right? So we're, we're looking for this piece right here. So we got half of this uh, four inches is two, right? Plus two. So it would be, I, I don't know, you could write this either way. Two plus four divided by two is four inches. Okay, so I, I just put the two first because this block right here came first and then half of that block is why I did that. It really wouldn't matter how you did it. But. So those are, mm-hmm. If it was two plus uh, four divided, wait, are we doing four divided by two first, right? Did yeah, you yeah, okay. you do, it, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I don't necessarily have to put parentheses in there. You do your multiplication division first, right? Yeah, I didn't think Yeah. What else? Chris, you had your hand up. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's this two inches plus this four divided by two. So yeah, if it if it helped to put parentheses around that, you could. But I read somewhere once where you actually don't have to show those. Yeah, it's just a automatic multiplication division comes before any addition or subtraction. So now the the x bar that we're looking for if we can find the cursor, is going to be this same equation. I could say x bar equals y bar equals. Oh, yeah, but I can't do that, can I? Because it changes the it changes part of that. So I can't really do that. So let's don't shortcut this. So x bar is going to equal the area of 1 times x of 1 minus the area of 2 times x2 minus area of 3 times x3. All of that divided by area of 1 minus area of 2 minus area of 3. Now it becomes what Don used to say was plug and chug. So you go in there and you write it out. You say x bar equals, we know the area of 1 was 36, right? Square inches times some number, which I'm going to have to look up there, minus the area of 2, which was 3.14 square inches. Times 3.5. 3.5 three and and for this one? Yeah. yeah, that was the one we had. Yeah. What was the first one? 3. Yeah, that makes sense. Minus the area of the third one, which was eight, and we can just look right up here, can't we? Eight square inches, and then this number was four, wasn't it? All of that divided by, and if you had already figured out what the area was, you could just write that down there, couldn't you? But it's 36 square inches minus uh, 3.14 square inches minus 8 square inches. Cancel out. Punch that in, what do you end up with? 2.62. How much? 2.62 inches. 2.62 inches. So then that means that in this big picture up here, 
if we went over see it's not right in the middle is it and that's what we said the the center of gravity thing is going to be right there and that distance if you will is going to be 2.62 inches from that edge that's where if you stuck a pin in there and spun that thing it would just spin till friction took over right no no I'll, I'll, what I'm looking for on the test and you can do these pictures if you want but what I'm looking for on the test is everything from this plus sign over I'm looking for I really would like to see all this and whether you write this equation out, I don't care as long as you write this equation out because as you, what you're going to see on the test on the key is I'm going to have okay so you've got this area right here I'm going to have a tick mark there 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 uh, probably not worry about the the unit there and then I would have tick marks here 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 and there and then there and I would give you credit for all those if so you, you show just write area one 36 inches squared yeah show that six times six. I, I guess you can but if you got it wrong then you're gonna miss it's three small. points so if you choose to do that, if you want to be brave, you know, it's how much money do you want to put down on that craps table? You know, but if you show me your work and maybe you had this six right, but not that six, and then the 36 was wrong, then you're not going to miss everything. You're probably only going to miss this one. So I, I like my chances better by showing my work. All of it. And then of course you would so then this middle this formula right here wouldn't have to show but all this would okay including your units why not why well, you want to shortcut it when I'm going to give you points for not shortcutting then this wouldn't have to be there but this would and then of course you would want to probably circle your final answer Josh sorry to keep you so long do what now? It's basically just find the area, put in the equation, and that's pretty much all what you're doing. Well, you're finding the area plus the different y value and the x value for each centroid. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then you throw it into that equation, which you're going to have the equation because you've got the handout. Okay. That's all there is to chapter 7. Now, personally, I think we ought to just move right on to chapter 8 since we're already two weeks behind. Because chapter 8 is the rest of the story that we had. Where did we have it? Uh, somewhere right here. Chapter 8 is the rest of the story, which is the moment of inertia calculation. Just real, can I ask a question real quick? Though? Like <clears throat> sure, if absolutely. If you have a problem 7 11 in the actual problems, like not the examples, Right, right. On the one, there's four pictures there, but on the one in the top right corner. Let's see. Oh, oh yeah, that is a problem that, by the way, I was going to ask you to do. Oh. Cool. <laughs> you would just break that into like one triangle and then one circle and then the overall whole square? Well, see, if I told you now, that would be yeah, like so cheating, wouldn't it? If you're going to ask us to do it. No, 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 we'll look at that. So personally, what I would do? I'm just wondering how you would break it up. This is how I would break that one up. Okay, so seven is that seven eleven? Seven eleven. Yeah, seven eleven. 